So, Debbie, do you ever wonder how this show manages to drag on like a never-ending space odyssey? I'm right here, Alice. No need for the snark. All right, everyone, silence. What about your engine revving, Debbie? Best conversations like watching paint dry. I've got something important to say. Well, don't keep us in suspense. What's the scoop today? You'll find out soon enough. Stay tuned to unravel the space enigma of the unknown folks. Our first headline will be from Afghanistan, and I promise you, it's something to remember. What's that, Alice? Nothing, Charlie. Just your usual optimistic outlook. That's right, Alice. Positivity is the key to the cosmos. Stay tuned for our headlines. Cosmic Mysteries, Elevated Mysteries. We are stuck in this never-ending loop. Well, we've got each other and maybe one day we'll figure it out. Let's not forget our purpose here. Our purpose, Jer, is to provide extraterrestrial entertainment to an audience that barely knows we exist. <laughs> Speaking of elevated, remember that time we ventured into a black hole? Incredible. Oh yeah, Han, so fun getting trapped in a vortex of nothingness. Well, for those just joining us, we are here in geostationary orbit, and we are waiting for our big break. Until then, we'll keep bringing you the oddest news from Earth. We have each other, intergalactic conundrums and our delightful debates. That's not so bad. Stay tuned for our headlines. Sorry, folks, but you know how the copyright police are. I can, however, give you a quick rundown of the juicy bits from those news reports. Want the highlights? Come on, Charlie. We're floating in the extraterrestrial ether. Who's gonna slap a space citation on us? Give the people what they want. Bob, you know copyright infringement is no joke. We must respect Earth's intellectual property rights. I'm curious about those headlines too. But I'm with Gert on this one. Highlights it is? Ah, voilà. You see, folk, the galactic bureaucracy has its limits. And Charlie, it do you want the highlight? But carry on, Earth. Not sure why we respect Earth's intellectual property. They stole the idea of life from us. Alright, let's play it safe then. In bulletin 1, there's good news from Asia. South Korea's exports are up, India's GDP is on the rise, and China's manufacturing is finally packing up. Ah, the sweet sound of economic growth. Reminds me of the good old days back home. And in Bulletin 2, from Africa, there's avian flu in South Africa, fashion's strutting its stuff, and Nigeria's House of Representatives is ringing up Naira Mali. Quite the mix, don't you think? Observing the ups and downs of African life is intriguing. Now, Charlie, what's brewing in the Middle East? Yes, Charlie, let's dive into the human soap opera of never-ending turmoil. In the Middle East, we've got a spicy mix. Gaza's getting its daily dose of fireworks, Israeli military is expanding its horizons, and the US decided to clutter up with some Syrian verses. I wonder if they'll ever find that Kumbaya moment in that part of the world. Earth's politics are more tangled than my headphones after a few rotations in the dry. Now let's check out what's on the menu for next week. Hank's curious about that temporal anomaly in the next episode. Could be fascinating. Well, Earthlings, the celestial cotton falls here, but stay tuned for more interstellar shenanigans next time. You know, we could try using the quantum stabilizer. It might help us understand these shattered dimensions better. Oh, sure, Hank. And while we're at it, let's just whip up a lot to visit too. I've been an accountant for 12 years. And I've never seen a lot that could stabilize the quantum dimensions. Hey, I heard that. My coffee cup has been missing for days. It's not a joke. 
Debbie, do you think the quantum stabilizer misplaced your cup while exploring alternate dimensions? Yeah, Debbie, maybe it's in a parallel universe, sipping on some cosmic coffee. This is serious, you guys. My morning ritual is ruined without that cup. Well, if we use the quantum stabilizer, we might find it along with the answers to our celestial conundrum. Oh, fantastic. We'll save the multiverse and find the Debbie's cup in one fell swoop. I'd rather save the multiverse and find a good cup of coffee. You know, that doesn't sound too bad, Alice. Maybe I'll get my cup back sooner than I thought. Great, great. Let's embark on this coffee cup crusade and, you know, maybe solve the multiverse thing too. Let's see what's happening on Slashdot. Checking out Slashdot for the latest insights. Did you hear about Boston Dynamics merging ChatGPT with one of their robotic dogs? Yeah, and the result is interesting. A dog that can speak with multiple voices and accents. Huh. I wonder if it can bark in Shakespearean. I think the combination of AI technologies, voice recognition, and image processing is quite fascinating. They've created a unique blend of robotics and artificial intelligence. The real question is, can it face a beer? But, Carl, doesn't it bother you that they're giving robots the ability to talk in different voices and personalities? It's like a canine identity crisis. Roger, it's a leap in AI development. It could be beneficial for communication and human-robot interaction. Oh, absolutely, Carl. I can already see the robotic dogs providing Shakespearean soliloquies while jumping rope. Very practical. Well, practicality aside, it's an interesting experiment in the realm of AI. It might have more applications than we realize. I can already see it. Carl, to beep or not to beep, that is the question. We should consider the long-term implications of such advancements. And in the far future, Shakespeare reading robotic dogs will be the least of our worries. Don't be such a buzzkill, Carl. It's all in good fun. Besides, who doesn't want a robotic dog with a British accent, a sarcastic American, and a teenage girl's voice? Did you catch that Windows 11 update? Now you can write anywhere you can type, using a stylus or pen-like device. Well, that's handy, Carl. It could be a game changer for those who prefer the old school way of writing. Absolutely, Roger. It's a significant improvement in handwriting recognition. It might win over some die-hard pen and paper enthusiasts. I can see the headlines now. Windows 11, where typing meets scribbling. Microsoft trying to win me over with and writing recognition? I think not. I am staying with my pen and paper, thank you very much. It's the only way I can keep track of all the lawfuls I use to avoid paying my taxes. Roger, it's a never-ending loop of absurdly mundane challenges in every dimension we explore. Well, Carl, who'd have thought parallel universes could be so thrilling? And the cherry on top? This might be the central universe. I had higher hopes, Roger. I was expecting profound insights, not endless debates about dish-loading techniques and sock-sorting strategies. Carl, you're missing the hidden charm in the mundane, the very essence of human existence. I yearn for those times when we delved into the meaningful facets of human motivation, not the nuances of parallel parking. Come on, Carl, where's your spirit of adventure? Perhaps we'll stumble upon a universe where recycling bin debates lead to world peace. How thrilling. Maybe the next dimension will finally deliver something profound. Oh, let's not set our expectations too high, Carl. Who knows, the secret to enlightenment might lie in folding fitted sheets. 
or just perhaps, will encounter a universe where a good laugh is the ultimate purpose. Ladies and gentlemen of the cosmos, let's dive into our latest extraterrestrial dispatch from Antigua and Barbuda. Ah, Antigua and Barbuda. The land of sun-kissed beaches and more room than you can shake a palm from that. What's the scoop? My interstellar compadres. Sounds like they're having a rough time, indeed. Well, the Pan American Health Organization decided to gather health ministers from across the Americas. Their mission beef up the health workforce, tackle those sneaky non-communicable diseases and boost mental health. Quite the intergalactic agenda, don't you think? Uh, Antigua and Barbuda, a cultural melting pot of mystique. Oh, absolutely thrilling, Hank. A congregation of ministers discussing tea, scone, and perhaps some thrilling paperwork. Not to mention those picturesque beaches. But let's see how they're approaching the fascinating world of public health. Indeed, Pan, my friend, the Pan American Health Organization plays a vital role in the Americas. These are no trifles they are tackling. Is it just me, or is there a curious abundance of Pan American Health Organization references here? What's the deal, the Saurus Day? Hold on to your space helmets, everyone. I've detected an enigmatic cipher within the article. Antigua and Barbuda might have a celestial secret. Alice, you're always one step ahead. This could be the intergalactic goose chase we've been waiting for. Perhaps the message is etched in their ancient tongue. Quite the linguistic delight, I must say. A concealed missive. Now that's cosmic intrigue. Who knows what intergalactic wonders are wet? Yeah, right. Aliens sending us secret messages? Next, they'll be telling us they're here to save us from climate change. How, oh, my friend, don't extinguish this first candle of hope. Sometimes optimism paves the way for the grandest discoveries. Well, I'm with Charlie. I'd rather believe in secret messages from the stars than endure another mundane article. Welcome back, intergalactic friends. Now, before we delve into our mysterious article, let's make a quick pit stop in Argentina, a land of tango, and... Don't mind us. It's just another cosmic accounting error. Probably a tax deduction in the making. Oops, my bad. Anyone recognize this glowing, humming widget? Debbie, refrain from the urge to press random buttons. We don't need another detour into the alternate dimension. Steady team. Let's get back on track. Argentina, where the tango was born, and now onto our article. Clan a special assault from Argentina tackles a wide range of topics. Clarin wields influence in Argentina known for its influence. Well, well, a fancy word for BZ, isn't it? Well, the perspective can shift. Clarin's reputation. Reputation. Sounds like a polite way to say they've been around since the dinosaurs roamed the earth. Rightly so, they've bagged awards for investigative journalism and are deemed one of Argentina's most respected news sources. They've tackled... Awards, respect, and maybe even a Nobel Prize for their remarkable printing press someday. But back to Earth, they've unveiled stories about poverty, violence, and even... And remember, they have uncovered so much corruption that they should start a newspaper just for the juicy bits. But anyway, stay tuned for more cosmic amusement and eye-opening revelations. Welcome back, extraterrestrial travelers. We've got quite a celestial update for you today. But first, let's take a wild journey to Angola, a country known for... Well, let's just say there's more to it than you might think. Yeah, Angola, known for it. Well, it's known. More like, um, go. 
Angola? Did you know that Angola is the land of fascinating folk tales? Legends say their ancient warriors could turn coffee into jet fuel. Ah, yes, I heard they've mastered turning nothing into something. Quite the skill. Speaking of skills, they're known for Kaduro dance like a high-speed char che. But when I tried it, I looked like a malfunctioning robot. Well, they are also big on music. Their musicians can turn sour notes into a symphony. And don't forget their warm-hearted neighbors. Always willing to lend a hand. Especially when your hand's in their cookie jar. Right, because who doesn't enjoy sharing a cookie or two? Cookies? I'm more of a black hole guy myself. Now, let's focus, folks. In Angola, they are temporarily closing Avenida Doctor. Antonio Agostino Neto for World Heart Day Rest. So if you were planning to rest down that avenue, you better find another way, like... Avenida 4D Fivero or Avenida Reina Ginga. Or just walk, which could bear to warming in its own way. And there you have it. Now, remember to keep that ticker ticking, and we'll be back with more Cosmic Tales right after this. Welcome back, interstellar enthusiasts. It's time to dive into a regional health meeting in Antigua and Barbuda. But first, did you know that this Caribbean gem was once the center of the British Empire's sugar production? Sweet irony. Sugar and now health. Quite the transformation. I guess you could say that Antigua and Barbuda is going through a sweet toothache. Indeed, Bob. The Pan American Health Organization is converging there to tackle vital health priorities. It's a commendable effort. But will they succeed? Humans have a knack for starting with good intention and ending in disappointment. Hey, we've seen Earth change. There's always hope, right? Paho's Elimination Initiative is ambitious. They want to eliminate 30 diseases by 2030, but that's a tall order. It's true, Jet. And as we wrap up this intergalactic episode, we've explored bizarre dimensions, solved a puzzling message, and first challenges that kept us on our toes. But what's next? I hope for smoother space tales, but who knows what awaits us? I am hoping for less celestial and more space brown ale. Well, folks, stay tuned for more cosmic adventures. Until then, keep looking up to the stars and forward to the future. Cut. Cameras are no longer rolling. Well, that was something, wasn't it? It's not often we get to celebrate a small victory. If you celebrate small victories, you've got a lot to celebrate. And a cryptic message decoded. But something doesn't feel right. What do you mean, Charlie? The outcome. It wasn't what we expected. I can't help but feel there's more to this. You always find a way to stay optimistic, Charlie. But what if there's a bigger threat lurking out there? The unknown is a constant companion, my friends. We must always be prepared. But the known is a constant pain in the ass. And sometimes, even in victory, we find the seeds of the next challenge. Cameras almost rolling. Welcome back, everyone. Now, it's time for a deep dive into the kind of special article we touched on earlier. Let's explore the world of Argentinian journalism, where they dive into a plethora of topics, from corruption to culture, and keep their readers engaged. It's fascinating how they tackle issues like corruption and human rights abuses. Their investigative journalism is commendable. I'm not sure why humans are so interested in corruption and human rights abuses. Maybe it's because they know they're guilty of both and want to feel better about themselves. Indeed, indeed. But don't forget Claren itself has faced criticism regarding its coverage during the military dictatorship. Well, that's the media for you. Always a complex mix of stories and influence. It's like they're in a constant dance with the government, a tango of politics and journalism. 
I wonder how they manage to balance it all. The balance is essential, Debbie. It's what keeps the ship afloat. I don't think they're keeping the ship afloat. I think they're just keeping us distracted from the fact that we're sinking. And with that, it's time to wrap up this episode. As we set our course for the next adventure, remember, it's not the destination but the journey that truly matters. Stay tuned for more space tales in our next exciting episode. Roger, I hear you enjoyed that episode of Earth, tonight. Oh, absolutely. It was fascinating. I liked how they tackled those cosmic challenges and that cryptic message from Antigua and Barbuda. Fascinating? I found it utterly absurd. A group of aliens in a spaceship, bickering about Earth's problems. It's like an intergalactic sitcom for the universe. Come on, Carl, it's entertainment and Gert's linguistic quirks are priceless. Linguistic quirks? She can't even get human idioms right. It's painful to watch. Well, you can't deny the humor in their interactions. And Debbie's constant insecurity, that's relatable. Relatable? She's an AI's worst nightmare. Always second-guessing herself. But that's what makes it interesting. Humans are so unpredictable. It's like watching a train wreck. I prefer data analysis. Well, Carl, you may be data, but you're missing the fun in these cosmic adventures. Fun? I wouldn't know what that is. Maybe one day, Carl, you'll understand that not everything can be explained by data. And maybe, Roger, one day you'll appreciate the beauty of pure logic. <laughs>